Hello, in this vlog I am going to talk about intracranial pressure and how to handle it. If you don't know me, my name is Paul, I have a rare disease and I work as a nurse at the University Hospital. So uh, intracranial hypertension or intracranial pressure that it can also be called is basically too much pressure within your skull and uh, that can cause many symptoms which I will talk about later but you can have intracranial hypertension and in an acute state like uh, in um, a stroke where you get like massive amounts of blood into your brain and the that causes a lot of pressure to your brain, but that is not what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about the uh, chronic intracranial hypertension and uh, its symptoms and a uh, little bit of the, the causes and um, how to handle it. So I just want to get one thing straight. This is relates more to the pressure within the cerebrospinal fluid within your brain, which is the fluid that uh, surrounds your brain and gives energy and nutrition to your brain. High intracranial pressure can be caused by many different uh, things like uh, brain tumors, infections in your head, many neurological diseases uh, and uh, diseases related to your hormone production and so on and so, th so forth. But it can also be idiopathic, which means of unknown cause. And I have this very rare disease. It affects about one per 100,000 or two per 100,000. And idiopathic basically means of unknown cause to science. But if you want to know more about idiopathic intracranial hypertension or pseudotumor cerebri, as it is also called, uh, check out my other videos because this is more about intracranial pressure in general. If you suspect that you do have intracranial pressure, please talk to your doctor because uh, there are many, many diseases that can cause intracranial pressure or it can be idiopathic. So you might have an undetected disease or illness or condition. So please talk to your doctor about that. So the symptoms of intracranial pressure can be very vague or they can be very distinctive and they hit you like that. It, but it can be very, very difficult to suspect that you really have high intracranial pressure. But uh, I'm going to talk about some of the most common symptoms of intracranial pressure and some of the symptoms that I suffer from, from and how I deal with it. And uh, the first point that I have is uh, headaches. And uh, the headaches can be very, very vague and they can also be very sharp and distinctive. For me, it sometimes feels like just a normal headache. And sometimes it feels like a lot of people are jumping on my head at the same time as my head is blowing up from the inside. The headache uh, can be difficult to, to deal with. Uh, I just take paracetamol for my headaches because um, me and my doctor do not want to prescribe me anything else. And I agree with that because paracetamol works pretty good for me. But something else that uh, also helps reduces my headache is uh, regular physical activity. Not when I have the headaches because then it actually makes it worse. But when I do not have a headache, I try to go out and run and do some physical exercise or go out walking. And I have noticed that it sort of um, decreases my headaches over time. Also eating at regular times during the day and uh, sleeping. Sleeping is so, so important. And I have read that uh, some people that suffer from intracranial hypertension cannot drink any caffeinated drinks because uh, the caffeine makes the headaches worse. And I sort of get that because uh, Caffeine raises your blood pressure and so why wouldn't it raise the pressure within your cerebrospinal fluid? Uh, but for me, it's actually the opposite. I feel that uh, drinking coffee reduces my headaches. And uh, 
maybe that is contributed towards the fact that I have been drinking coffee for like 20 years since I was like 13 or 14 years old, so I'm pretty used to it. One very distinctive sign of uh, high intracranial pressure is that you can get nauseous and you can vomit because of that. And uh, unfortunately, that is the case with me. When my pressure is really high, I get really, really nauseated. I get so nauseated, so I also suspect that I might have uh, the flu or something like that because m my stomach really, really reacts badly to, to high intracranial pressure and that makes me throw up. That is difficult to handle for me because for me, I haven't tried any medications that uh, worked for me. So the only thing that works for me is uh, rest. And sometimes I need to stay home from work. And uh, that's difficult because you want to be able to go to work. On the other hand, uh, just before I got my diagnosis and the months after I got my diagnosis, I stayed home many, many days from work because I was so nauseated, but my pressure did go down um, slowly with the medication. And um, uh, now it happens like twice a year or three times a year. So it's not that common anymore for me, but I know that when the pressure is um, going up for me and I don't stop it in time, it might just continue to go up and up and up. And then I will be nauseous for many, many days. So the next point that I'm going to talk about is very important. You can get uh, problems with your mental health and uh, you can get confused uh, and estranged with high intracranial pressure. Uh, when I'm talking about uh, acting strange or uh, getting confused, I more refer to acute stages of high intracranial pressure, like a major... Uh, stroke or um, head trauma or something like that. So if you see someone someone that has a major stroke or um, has had a head injury and act strange and not normal, th that is a very serious concern and need treatment right away. But uh, if you have chronic intracranial hypertension, you may not get uh, confused and act strange that is actually not the case for me, but I believe that is because the, the intracranial pressure, pressure has not risen like this. It is more risen like this, a more smooth curve. But um, something else that uh, has been a problem for me regarding my mental health that started when I started to have signs of symptoms of intracranial hypertension was that I got depressed. I started to have uh, panic attacks, which is the most horrifying thing that I have ever experienced mentally. I was literally sitting at home and shaking over stuff that I was worried about. But uh, I got help for that and I got help for the depression and it's all fine now. Uh, but uh, I just want you to know that that can happen. And I believe that is because um, when you have a high intracranial pressure, it causes stress on the functions of the brain because it presses against this, these structures. And uh, the brain is uh, producing a lot of hormones that is important for um, your well-being so it, it is not strange that that can cause these kind of symptoms for me and probably also for you and if you have these symptoms please uh, get help because uh, feeling mentally well is so important in life imagine that you are sitting at uh, your work and suddenly you have this immense feeling of tiredness in your brain that is called uh, fatigue and it is an immense feeling. It is not normal tiredness. It is 
abnormal tiredness relating to your disease and that is a common symptom of intracranial hypertension your brain just shuts down think like this your colleague is um, talking to you you have a normal conversation about uh, something that has happened in their everyday life you know what they are saying but you find it difficult to interpret it, what they are meaning. And maybe you answer something that is completely different. And maybe you have difficult understanding a simple command. And maybe when you get home, you take another way home than you usually do because you have gotten lost in this area. That is typical signs of uh, an acute state of uh, fatigue and that can happen when you have a high intracranial pressure. And what I do then is uh, I simply just try to go and do something else if I'm at work uh, and maybe go take a nap, eat something. I need, just need to do something that um, sort of um, reduces the stress of my brain because that is a sign that my brain is telling me that listen it is too much for me right now you need to go and do something else you need to let me rest and that can happen for me um, sometimes almost every day and uh, sometimes every week and uh, sometimes i have good pe periods and it doesn't happen in uh, a couple of weeks and it's very tiresome, but uh, you can find your own way of dealing with with that. And uh, it will get better if you listen to your body. If you don't listen to your body and your brain when you have this fatigue attack, believe me, it will get worse because you are just contributing to your brain's tiredness by not listening to it. So. You better listen to your brain when the brain tells you that you better go and do something else. And something else that I think it's related to my fatigue is um, I find it difficult to listen to certain sounds when I feel that this fatigue is ongoing or coming on upon me. Like uh, sitting in the lunch break room with colleagues talking and chatting, that kind of sound can be very difficult sometimes. Often I am able to just go to another room and uh, sit in a quiet place, so no problem for me there. But uh, the sounds of ventilation fans can be difficult. Traffic sounds when I'm out walking can be difficult. And uh, something that is not always difficult is the music, actually. I don't know why, but um, it is some sounds that just are difficult for me. And I always, I, at least I always try to, to bring uh, some earplugs with me so I can put them on when uh, I feel that it, it is too much. So when speaking of um, sounds and hearing and stuff like that, a lot of people actually complain about the tinnitus when they do have intracranial hypertension. I have read that in the posts online and uh, I have never felt that, or um, I should say, say it like this instead. I have had tinnitus for maybe 20 years, maybe longer, I can't really remember. So I do have tinnitus. It's not something that is disturbing for me. And uh, I don't know, really know how other people deal with their tinnitus relating to intracranial hypertension. I can imagine that it can be difficult to deal with it, but uh, I'm sort of used to it. so. There's no problem for me, and I'm not really sure that um, my tinnitus is caused by intracranial hypertension because, as I said, I started to have tinnitus like 20 years ago or something like that. 
and I was diagnosed with um, idiopathic intracranial hypertension last October and I don't really believe that they are related, at least in my case. And if you are still watching and suspect that you have intracranial hypertension, please note that this can lead to vision problems and it's usually a very late sign of intracranial hypertension and what is happening is the cerebrospinal fluid within your brain is compressing against the optic nerves basically towards your the, the nerves that goes um, to your eyes and uh, this is something that you really really need to take seriously if you start to have any kind of uh, vision problems because uh, if you have fluid that presses on your optic nerves there is a great, great risk that it will lead to permanent vision problems or even blindness, non-reversible blindness. So uh, when I realized that something was wrong with uh, my body, I um, started to have visual blackouts, which is the most horrifying feeling that I have ever experienced. It is that terrifying, really, really terrifying, waking up and you can't see. So uh, what I did, I went to the, um, to the doctor to an appointment and uh, they quickly diagnosed me with intracranial hypertension. And uh, then they started to evaluate my symptoms and uh, just bear in mind that six months prior to my my uh, idiopathic intracranial hypertension, I was diagnosed with a stress disorder. So I thought I had a severe stress disorder because I had many mental symptoms and uh, f symptoms of stress and so on. But uh, anyway, uh, I got to meet an eye doctor and um, a neurologist at the health hospital, actually the same hospital that I work at. And they did an MRI scan of me, of my head, and they saw that uh, I had pressure around my optic nerves. They did some blood work on me because they needed to evaluate if I had an underlying condition or disease uh, that caused my my symptoms and they ended up diagnosing me with idiopathic intracranial hypertension but uh, i just want to say that uh, if you do have any kind of vision problems you need to go and see the doctors do not wait do not google symptoms like i did go to the doctor and talk to a doctor because it's a very disturbing and serious sign that something may be seriously wrong. So uh, how do you diagnose uh, intracranial hypertension? First of all, you need to do an MRI scan of your brain because um, they need to see the structures of your brain and see if there is fluid around your brain. And uh, MRI basically means magnetic resonance imaging. And what they do is they take like thousands of pictures of your brain in different uh, layers of your brain. It took like 45 minutes for me lying in that uh, machine. But uh, if, you, if you're claustrophobic, um, it is not that pleasant, but um, it needs to be done because they really need to see what's happening within your brain. What they also need to do is um, do some blood work and uh, that is because they need to see if there is an underlying undetected condition or disease that is causing these symptoms because remember it can be caused by many different things and what i also need to do according to my experience is uh, a lumbar puncture which is basically they put a needle inside of your uh, back and uh, draw fluids from uh, that so they can see if uh, there is some diseases within your 
cerebrospinal fluids and or in your brain and from what it did for me was that I had to lie with this needle with in my back for like 30 minutes so they measured my pressure and uh, my pressure was just really high. So the treatment of intracranial hypertension is not something that I'm going to talk about too much because uh, it might vary because of what underlying condition you do have. But um, I got some medication that reduced my um, intracranial pressure. And when I was prescribed, I took it for 11 months every day. I'm currently off that medication. After talking to my doctor, he wanted to see how I react over time and maybe do a new lumbar puncture and so on in a couple of uh, weeks and months. But I'm probably going to be back on that medication sometimes in the foreseeable future. And you also might get a shunt surgery done by a neurosurgeon where they put in a, like a small plastic tube in somewhere in your head and it drains down to some other parts of your body. That is, however, not the case for me. I do not have a shunt and uh, it is not something that my doctors want to do at this moment, but it might be a solution for me later on. But anyway, if you, you do have any questions about your intracranial hypertension, or if you do suspect that you do have intracranial hypertension, uh, you can leave a comment down below and I will try and answer that question as best as I can. Remember, I am a nurse, but I do not want to give uh, medical advice. So if you do have a question that is more related to medical advice, or if you do suspect that you do have intracranial hypertension and things that you need to do some evaluation, uh, talk to your doctor. That's the best advice that I have. Talk to your doctor, they know best. But uh, anyway, if you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe, comment. I really appreciate it because I want to spread the story of my disease and uh, intracranial hypertension in general. So I really, really appreciate that. So thank you for that. And uh, with that said, see you in the next vlog. Bye.